What we did was we created a nonprofit called First Responder Resiliency. And our intention was to provide an opportunity for people who are experts in the industry to come together. And that's what we did here in the heart of the wine country is we created a conference for first responders. When I first started as a firefighter, you just buried your emotions, you toughed it up. Now that I have a son in the fire department, that's really made me more aware of what I went through and I wanna, I wanna be a part of giving these new guys and gals that are coming into emergency services tools to be able to keep their balance through their career. I have untold numbers of firefighters who call their employee system program and they get a call back saying, well, we can get you in in about three months and they end up taking their lives. And that can't happen. We spend millions of dollars buying equipment, turnouts, breathing apparatus, millions of dollars on equipment to save their bodies and nothing for their minds. I didn't have those tools. I wasn't, I wasn't given the tools. I was given great tools to fight the fire, to keep my body healthy, but we weren't given the tools on how to deal with the stuff we see. And I began doing the research and finding out things like our life expectancy is 15 years less than civilians. Our suicide rate is off the charts. Our divorce rate is upwards of 80%. We have to do something. And honestly, for a long time, I kept thinking, someone's gonna do something, someone's gonna do something. I'm sure someone's gonna do something. And after I went through my own crisis with organ cancer and then struggling with post-traumatic stress injury, I realized maybe it's time that I do something. Our vision is to build a center, and that center will incorporate a lot of different modalities that first responders can utilize for their own well-being. When you're coming off a fatal shooting or a child killed in a car crash, you need that help now. What I like about the First Responder Resiliency Program is that if they have those calls or if they're struggling and they're coming off shift, they can stop here. And I think the idea that Sue has of having a place that's just available, you don't have to make an appointment, somebody's there, you can go, and whatever modality you might need at the moment, whether you want to sit and zen out, do some meditation, whether you want to do some yoga, whether you want to play ping pong, whether you want to talk with somebody, that's all available in one spot when you need it. Nobody knows what their own trigger or button will be. Some people can do 20 years, have no problem, and then run one call at the very end of their career that traumatizes them. And they end up committing suicide a year later. Or they end up isolated and depressed and drug addicted or alcoholic. It's not a matter of if you're going to be traumatized, it's a matter of when. 